Will Indiana ever break through in the Big Ten Eastern Division? Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, teaming up with SG1 Sports to bring you Big Ten previews right here. The Hoosiers taking on Ball State in Week 1. Indiana 5-7, five 5-7 and seven, five and seven under Tom Allen. Both seasons they were 5-6. and six. Couldn't get that elusive sixth win in the finale against Purdue and saw their chief rivals win the old oak and bucket and also go to postseason play while IU had to stay home. Tom Allen, you got to love the guy. The guy's fired up. He's passionate. He is trying to galvanize this program, and he's done some good things, but he needs to win six games to get to postseason play this year. And the non-conference slate would set up nicely for him, but he's got to battle the Big Ten Eastern Division with uh, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, and, of course, uh, some tough teams out of the Big Ten West as well. But it all starts in Week 1 against Ball State at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. You can catch the game noon Eastern time on CBS Sportsnet. Again, IU 5-7 and seven last year. They beat Virginia non-conference, but they went just 2-7 and seven in the Big Ten. Ball State 4-8, and 3-5 and five in the MAC. not one of the better teams in the MAC. And let's talk about them first with a Mike New as head coach. He's 10-26 in in three seasons. Uh, they played a really good game in South Bend against Notre Dame, only lost by one score, 24-16. But uh, they lost their starting quarterback, Riley Neal, who transferred to Vanderbilt. And this was the top passing offense in the MAC. Despite going 4-8, and eight, they could light it up and throw it downfield, but they lose their quarterback, Riley Neal, and they replace him with... Uh, a quarterback in Drew Plitt who replaced Neal last year when Neal was hurt and threw six touchdowns at eight picks and 65% completion percentage. So we will see if Plitt is up to the task. Again, the number one passing offense in the MAC in 2018. They bring back the entire offensive line and all top seven pass catchers. But again, are they going to be able to catch as many passes from Plitt as they did from Neal? including Riley Miller with 61 catches and Justin Hall with 69. Uh, the running back position is depleted. Uh, they lost all their running back produ production, so they bring in Walter Fletcher from a Division II program. Uh, the front seven on defense completely returns. Uh, nine starters on defense come back. That's the good news. The bad news is that they were 11th in the MAC in defense. They were awful last year. Ray Wilborn, Christian Albright are two of the standouts. Uh, Wilborn had 83 tackles and 10 and a half tackles for loss last season. 67 stops for Albright and eight tackles for loss. All right, let's talk Hoosiers under Tom Allen. Gotta love the guy. Passion and fiery, uh, but he's got to get a winner uh, to IU. He's got to be Purdue. Got to get to postseason play. All right. He brought in the best recruiting class ever at Indiana. Number eight in the Big Ten doesn't sound too impressive. Number 39 in the nation. But again, this is Indiana, which is usually in the 50s and 60s in recruiting. He brought in a four-star quarterback, Jack Tuttle, transfer from Utah. Is he going to be the starting quarterback? We don't know. As of this taping on the Monday before the first game on Saturday, they still have not decided or announced a starting quarterback between Michael Penix, who's probably got the highest ceiling, Tuttle, the four-star from Utah, and then also the incumbent, Peyton Ramsey, who's a bit limited despite being a decent player. 16 starts in his career, 19 touchdowns, 13 picks last season. Indiana must be getting serious about football. They uh, threw a ton of money at uh, Kalen DeBoer out of Fresno State to bring him in as offensive coordinator. Uh, paying an assistant coach at Indiana $800,000 is serious business for them. And uh, DeBoer is going to throw it. He threw it 37 times a game at Fresno State. This team has 15 returning starters, uh, an abundance of wide receiver and running back depth, led by Stevie Scott, who was one of the top freshmen in the Big Ten, with over 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. And his backups are highly touted. Uh, Four-star guys, too. Samson James, also Ronnie Walker. Those guys have been in the mix and will be this season. The wide receivers are at least five deep, led by Nick Westbrook, 42 catches, four touchdowns, and Donovan Hale, who had 42 catches and six touchdowns. All right, this defense was in the bottom five in the Big Ten in all the advanced metrics and all the standard statistics. 
Tom Allen has been the defensive coordinator. So he fired himself. He caused himself to step down from uh, running the defense, and they bring in uh, Kane Womack as defensive coordinator. They have featured st speed and athleticism in the recruiting classes, so they're better on that side of the ball, or should be. Uh, they've got Jerome Johnson, their top sack guy, but he only had three and a half last year. He's back. James Head, though, is probably going to be the best pass rusher at D-end. Uh, their safety, Bryant Fitzgerald, picked off three passes. And he's the best that they've got uh, in the secondary. Indiana and Ball State, uh, Indiana should win this one. Uh, this is the 10th meeting between these two schools. IU's won six of the nine, including 38-10 to 10 in 2018. Uh, Ball State won its two, last two in 2011 and 2012. Indiana wins this one. Our prediction, Hoosiers uh, win it 38-24 to 24 over Ball State. Keep it locked in here at SD1 Sports to uh, follow and track Big Ten football throughout and especially our week one openers. We'll be back with another one very soon.